seed bank, it's exploiting the actual natural ability of plants to stay dormant for decades by drying and cooling them. And the low temperatures that we use, minus 20 degrees Celsius, means that those seeds will, will hardly lose any viability for decades and they can be reawakened in our laboratories and in nurseries when required. Now, you've got 16% of the world's plants currently within the bank. What is the aim here? Do you want to reach 100%? At what point are you able to get enough seeds that you stop important plant species from going extinct? This is a massive task and the numbers are scary. And if you add in the seeds that are stored in our partner banks, those are 260 organizations around the world that are also holding seeds, then yes, it amounts to around 16% of the world's plant species. So there's a huge amount of um, work still needed and we're going to be focusing even more in the next decade on the most useful and the most threatened plants where we think there's a, an important role for seed banking to play. How do you work out what are the most important, most useful plants? Are these plants which give us food? Are these plants... How, how do you go through that classification process? Well, on the threats, um, there's some really good models and we know where land use change is occurring and where plants are at their most threatened. And unfortunately, two in five plant species are now estimated at threat of extinction. So we've got some quite good information as to where to put our efforts there. And in terms of useful plants, there's um, a lot of research on useful traits, the kind of um, drought and pest resistance that you might find in wild populations of plants that's still out there in the wild, but hasn't yet been brought into seed banks and incorporated into plant breeding. So we use our knowledge of the, the relationships between plants, the phylogeny, in order to help identify which are the near relatives of our 29 major crops, for example, in order to go out and make collections of those very important wild relatives in the field. Now, just talking about the threats, what are the biggest threats? Obviously, we've got climate change, we've got infrastructure projects. What are the things that are leading to the widespread loss of critically endangered plants? Those two are big ones, climate change, infrastructure. Um, land use change, particularly in the biodiverse tropics, is still very important. So the conversion of land to soya and um, to oil palm is still a major concern, and we're losing a lot of species in those environments. But even within Europe and UK, um, our own uh, growth and intensification of use of land is having an effect, I'm afraid. And so we have threatened species that are in the way of development and occasionally governments and businesses make decisions um, that mean they're going to be imperiled.